Okay, so a quick video going through electron excitation and how atoms absorb and emit photons. Okay, we'll start off with the Niels Bohr atom. And this is really the foundation of, of this whole idea. This is for this is a, the Niels Bohr atom for hydrogen. Now it looks kind of similar to the Rutherford atom. It's got the proton and nucleus in the center, but that's pretty much it. It starts to change then. It's all, um, Niels Bohr is really interesting in what happens to the electron itself. Now what we've got are these sets of bands around the outside of the, the nucleus. Uh, the electron there is shown as that large, uh, very large uh, black circle with the, uh, the, the white negative sign there. Now that um, electron can only exist on any of those lines. Okay, sorry, any of those circ circles, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and n equals infinity. And there are some in between n equals 3 and infinity, as indicated by those dotted lines there. Now, it can only exist on cer those certain ones, or it could exist outside n equals infinity, which means it's been ionized and it's left the atom entirely. Now, it always wants to get back to where it is right now. It's called ground state, n equals 1. To move outwards, it has to gain energy. We have to give it energy. And when it moves back inwards again, it loses energy. Okay, so ground state is where it's got its lowest energy possible. If they're given too much energy, as I said, they just they overshoot. They don't get to land on one of these uh, one of these energy ste steps or one of these energy bands. They shoot right out. Right now, if I consider, I'm going to forget about the, the the nucleus, the proton, because as I said, this this is all about the electron. And this is a, a just across a, a little slice, if you like, of those energy levels. So n equals one there, uh, ground state. That's where the electron is right now. N equals two, three, four, five, and then there's a gap. There are a finite number of, of these, by the way. There's not an infinite number. N equals infinity is just there to indicate that it no longer is under the influence of the of the uh, the nucleus at all. We can see here that it's got minus thirteen point six electron volts. Well, I said earlier that this this is at its lowest energy point. And what this tells me is to get this electron all the way to the ionization point, n equals infinity, I need to give it at least 13.6 electron volts of energy. Well, let's have a quick look at what that corresponds to in joules, because it's usually easier to think in terms of joules. So here we go. So I've converted the electron volts into joules by simply multiplying by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Uh, and we get this. Well, key bits. All electrons want to be in ground state. Every atom has certain states at certain levels. And each atom, every single element, every single atom has a unique set that is unique to it. Electrons have to land exactly on these steps. They can jump more than one at a time, but they have to land exactly on them. If they get given energy that's a little bit too much or, a little, or not quite enough, then they simply ignore that photon totally and it passes them by. Okay? Let's have a quick look at an example for, uh, for absorbing photons. Okay, so the energy arrives as photons. Um, here... This electron is moving up to n equals 2. To do that, it has to go from 13.6 electron volts to, uh, to negative uh, 3.4. Well, that means a difference. It needs to absorb 10.2 electron volts of energy. If it was 10.4 or 10.3 or 10.19, it would be no good. It simply would ignore uh, that particular photon and it would stay where it was. Okay? It can only absorb one photon at a time, and it has to be 10.2 electron volts to move to that band. If it then got hit by a photon 2.65, 2 2.65 is too big. It, it misses n equals 4, uh, and it's not enough to get to n equals 5. So it has to get 2.55, and it would land then directly on n equals 4. So it would take that photon and ignore the others. Uh, if I was to give it more than 0.85 electron volts right now, it would scoot straight up past n equals infinity, and it would be ionized. So if I gave it 1 electron volt, it would use 0.85 of that 1 to get to, to, to ionize. And it would then use the remaining 0.15 electron volts as kinetic energy. Right, emitting photons. Now, this electron is at point n equals 5. It doesn't like to be up there. It wants to get rid of energy. It wants to get down to n equals 1, down to ground state. The only way it can do that is by emitting photons. Okay, so this uh, particular electron uh, wants to get down there. And the only option it's got is to, to jump down energy levels. Okay. It doesn't have to jump one at a time. It could jump straight from n equals 5 to n equals 1. It could go from 5 to 3. It could go from 5 to 2 um, to 1. It, you know, it doesn't matter how many steps it takes. Uh, but by getting rid of only certain, there's only a certain combination uh, that it can, it can follow. There isn't an infinite number, which means there are only certain photons it can release. Okay. And certain photons mean certain colors. So let's look at an example here. So the lowest energy possible for this one, the smallest change, the smallest amount of energy it can possibly lose would be to move from n equals 5 to n equals 4. Right, so band 5 to band 4, which corresponds to a, a loss in energy of 
0.3 electron volts. That's the smallest, the lowest energy photon this electron could ever emit. Okay. Now, if it released, so if we measured it in a photon it released and it came out as 0.97, we could actually work out that it must have moved to, to band 3 because of the difference between uh, 0 0.54 electron volts at band 5 and 1.51 electron volts at band 3 is exactly 0 0.97. So it must have moved from n equals 5 to 3. The maximum possible energy, there we go, that this photon could ever emit would be 13.6, 13.06 or electron volts. And that would correspond in a single jump from n equals 5 to n equals 1. It's important to note here that, that these electrons can only ever emit one photon at a time in a similar way that they can only absorb one at a time as well. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means a couple of things, a couple of quite interesting things. The first one is that every photon energy relates to frequency and color, and every atom is unique, which means that they absorb only certain colors. This is hydrogen. Hydrogen only absorbs these colors here. So the black lines indicate the colors it takes when I shine all the colors of the rainbow at it. It only takes those certain colors, which means if I see an absorption spectrum like that, I know hydrogen is present somewhere. Well, if it only absorbs them, but it likes that particular frequency, it only emits the same ones as well. Because it, it grabs that energy, hangs onto it, moves up on a level, doesn't quite know what to do with it, throws it back out again, and de-excites, drops back down. So that's the emission spectra there at the bottom. This is one of our key, key mechanisms for finding out what certain chemicals are. Uh, we do um, spectral analysis, we look at the spectrums either absorbed or emitted by, by certain chemicals. Certainly when we look at the stars, this is our key mechanism for finding out what the stars are made of. Okay, hope that helps.